glory. Praise the Lord. God is moving in our midst. It's an exciting time. Amen. To praise the Lord and to worship the Lord. Amen. This morning I want to speak on the five sayings of Satan. Hmm. I'll be coming from Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 15. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 through 15. And I'll be reading as y'all are looking. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down <clears throat> to the ground, which did it weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above all, above the stars of God. I will sit up also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the Lord. I will ascend above the height of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. This morning, we're going to share what Satan wanted to be and what Satan wanted to do too. The world today wants us to do the same thing. They might camouflage it in different ways, but it's the same meaning. For thou hast said in thine heart, that's what God said, as a man thinketh, so a man is. And I'll share this with you. What is in, what is within, is what will come out. What is within a person eventually will come out. Luke chapter 10 verse 18 says, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. So this morning, let's look at five things that Satan said. I call it the five wills. The five I wills. I think Frank Sinatra had this, and Elvis Presley did. Also as well, I did it my way. Well, if we do it our way, we're missing out on God's way. Amen. Because when we do it our way, we have to bless ourselves. When we do it God's way, He blesses us. Amen. Because we're walking after God. First we see, Satan says, I will ascend unto the heaven. The name for Satan in Hebrew means a star or the planet Venus. Satan says in his heart, he will move upward. Many people today wants to move upward. To me it's sad. Because I want to move upward with God doing the promoting. I want God to be doing the leading. I want God to have control over me. Amen. Wherever He wants me to be. Amen. In order to do whatever He wants me to do. All right. <clears throat> and this is very important. Very important. <clears throat> to be submissive to God. And let God have His way. I will, without receiving God's approval, that means I say I will do this instead of letting God tell me what He wants me to do. And God speaks to me. And God leads me. I want to do what God wants me to do. I want to receive God's approval. I want to ask God, where do you want me? What do you want me to do? Well, first of all, we know what He wants us to do, and that's to worship Him, and that's what we did this morning. And when you worship God like we worship Him this morning, Satan's going to get mad. Mm -hmm. Satan's going to tell people, you know what? You know what? You need to go somewhere else. You need to go where you can get your little peace. Because when you come into the presence of God, you're not going to have peace until you make peace with God. <clears throat> And people have things that's holding them back. They can walk into the presence like we had this morning and they're going to get very uneasy. 
Because God is the one that's moving in their life. It's almost like this, like a washing machine. When you get clothes dirty, especially when you have a leak underneath the trailer and you've read from the top to the bottom, you need some washing, right? Well, a lot of us are like that too. We might, we're saved, but we might be saved. That's up that's an individual. But yet, we get out into this world and we start getting the world's filth on us. And just like our dirty clothes, we need to put them in a washing machine. But we can't stop there. We can take all the dirty clothes and put it in the washing machine that we can't put no more in. <clears throat> but that's not going to do any good. Why? Because you need some type of washing powder, detergent. And you got to have water. And then it's got to agitate it. Then it's got to spin it. You got to go through a process. And a lot of us, we have things in us that we don't even know about. We've been in the world. We're picking things up in the world. But we need, we need the blood of Jesus, but we need to be submissive to Jesus. We need to allow Jesus to agitate us, to get all that stuff out. Then we become what? We become clean. Not because, not because of ourselves, not because we get it our way, but because we get it God's way. Amen? Many today, we see many today who spend their energy for nothing. They run as fast as they can one way, and when they get there, they still don't know where they're at, so they run it as fast as they can another way. All they're doing is wearing themselves out. Many believers are wearing themselves out. We need to be attentive to God. You hear many to just say, all I want to do is get to heaven. I don't care how I get there, all I want to do is get there. Even if it's by the skin of my teeth. Well, I don't know if your teeth has got skin or not. Mine don't, not somebody else's might. But you know what? I want to get to heaven, but I want to get to heaven and when I get there, God says, Son, you did the best you could with what you had. Now I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. And that's what I believe each one of us here this morning. Amen. And I believe that's why we're here. Uh -huh. We want to be in the presence of God because when we're in the presence of God, we can bask in the presence of God. And when the enemy comes, Satan comes and tries to grab a hold to us, if we're in the presence of God, if we surrounded ourselves with godly people, that person is going to say, oh no, oh no, oh no, I'm not going with you, oh no, oh no, <clears throat> I'm not going with you. I'm going to stay with God and I'm going to stay with godly people. I don't want to hear people say, well, I believe in Jesus. I want to see people who live in for Jesus. Amen. You know, the devil can fool people. Amen. But one thing, one thing that I want, I want to surround my people with godly people. Because when I surround myself with godly people, and Satan comes and tries to tempt me, I got a, it's almost like being in a fort. I got protection. Amen. Back when I was in the army, way back, way back then, when the army was the army, we had MPs that did carry guns. They did have sidearms, but they were military police. Today, I don't know if the army's got anything to protect them. I might be speaking out of turn. I just don't know. But we need to be protected, people. As born-again believers, we need to be protected. We need to surround ourselves with godly people, not worldly people. Worldly people don't try to get you out. That's like somebody, just like somebody who's who's uh, addicted to alcohol. Their dear and good friend says, well, only one drink won't hurt you. Come on, just one, one drink. I'm going to buy it for you. I'm going to buy it for you. Well, they don't understand that when you're addicted to alcohol, one drink is going to bring you to a case. One drink is going to put you in a gun. One drink is going to, that's not a good friend. When you surround yourself with godly friends, that friend says, look, let's go get a cup of coffee. Somebody might say, well, I don't drink coffee. You drink water? Yeah. Well, I drink coffee, you drink water. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's the fellowship. It's the fellowship. Y'all with me on that? Amen. And I'm going to praise God. Then the second thing we see the devil doing 
It says, I will exalt my throne. Satan wanted to be greater than any of the stars. I remember at times going to wet up. I'd work for Times Picayune and Sunday morning sometimes I'd, well sometimes they get almost sometimes just take a shower and preach. But anyway, they go back and work that night. But even that evening, I'd preach that evening service. But anyway, I would get in, it was, it was cold and, and you could look up and the sky was just black. But then they had countless stars that would just lighten it up. It was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And you know something? God knows the name of every star. God put them in heaven and He knows the name. He does the same for us. Amen? Amen. He does the same for us. But Satan, Satan wanted to be greater than any other stars. He sought us to glorify he said, I will improve my throne. I will improve my throne. What God has given you, what He's saying, what God has given is not enough. We gotta have more. We gotta have more. We gotta have more. I say this, we might have to have less in order to show God's glory in doing what we're doing with less than what many other people might have. You know, it's good to have certain things. But it's also good when God gives you the things that you need for that moment. Amen? Praise the Lord. Ooh, I will exalt my throne. No, I will not exalt my throne. I want what God wants me to have. And I believe right now, this is what God wants us to have. We have each other, don't we? Amen. We don't need what the world has to offer us. We don't need what Satan wants us to have. Whatever Satan wants us to have, we don't want it. We don't want it. Because it's going to eventually tear us apart and break us down. I want to be satisfied. But I want to be satisfied in Christ Jesus. And I want each one of us to be satisfied in Christ Jesus as well. Praise God. And then we see what Satan really wants is the attention of the worshipers. The attention of the worshipers. Satan wanted all the attention of the other, other angel worshipers. He wasn't satisfied with what he had. He wanted more. Why? Because he wanted to be greater than God. He wanted to be greater than God. Don't you think we need to praise God and thank Him for what we have? Whatever we have, we need to thank God. Lord, I want to thank you. We don't have a, we might not have a four hundred thousand dollar house or a million dollar house, but that's okay with me. Amen. Somebody would have to keep it clean. Well, I guess if I had that kind of money, I'd have somebody keeping it clean. But anyway, I'm satisfied with what God gave. Me. I'm not saying, oh, if only, if only, if only. No, I'm gonna say, God, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Praise you, God. Praise you, Lord. Amen. Satan wanted others to worship him. That's what they wanted. Then, number four says, I will ascend above the clouds. People today, I've seen them, are trying to ascend above where they're at. Why? Because they're not satisfied where they're at. They want to get greater. They want to go above it. Well, they can gather all the, world, the wealth the world has. But this wealth is not going to give them the peace and the joy that they're really searching for. Amen. All the money in the world is not going to give them the love that their, their hearts desire. We need the love of Jesus Christ. And when we have the love of Jesus Christ, we're going to find fulfillment that surpasses all understanding. Amen. And that's what I want. Fulfillment that surpasses all understanding. How many here has ever been dissatisfied with the stage that you were in at one time in your life? I know I was. That I knew that there was something better. I knew that there was something better. And I found it when I met Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
Praise God. I will ascend above the clouds. Many people today, they desire to escape the reality of where they're at. And they do that in drugs. They do that in alcohol or whatever it takes for them to escape. Now, as far as myself, I like to escape too. I watch football until I get tired of it. I'm good for about a half. If I get past a half, well. But anyway, we all need to escape reality for just a moment. And we can do that by just sitting across the table and talking to somebody. Finding yourself on your knees. And God will give you the encouragement that when you get up, God will give you the encouragement to go further with Him. And that's what we need. We need to be with Jesus. And it's so important today. You know, I want to feel good. But I don't want to feel good by getting out of reality. The reality of life is if I live tomorrow, I'm going to have to wake up and do the things that I need to do on a Monday. And I want to be able to do them with excitement. I want to be able to do them with joy. And the only way to do that, the only way to do that is asking God, God, what do you want me to do? Not what I want to do. Not what I want to do, but what do you want me to do? And God might say, well, son, I want you to go with Mickey to McDonald's. Or God might say, son, I want you to get some fish at St. Francis Hospital's cafeteria. Or God might say, there's a man that wants to talk to you at McDonald's on 18th Street. But I want to do what you want me to do. I don't want to ascend above the clouds unless you elevate me. Because I want to be in your presence. And that's the most important thing. If you don't get anything else out of this message, it's simply this. That we want to be with Jesus. Amen. That we want to be with Jesus. And we don't want to be where we're not supposed to be. I'm telling you, they're Christians today. They're believers today. That they're allowing the world or others tell them where they need to be. They just got to make a few extra dollars. But if you're missing God, if you're getting away from God, those few dollars is going to cost you a thousand dollars. Because it's going to bring you where you don't really need to be. And I'm being honest. I'm being honest. Amen? We have amen. I'm not going no further on that. But we, we oh, praise God. Then it says, number five, I will be like the most high. I will be like the most high God. Everything we do should and must be done God's way. And God's timing. A lot of times we pray and we can't figure out why we haven't got an answer. Well, there might be different reasons why. But if our faith and trust is in Jesus Christ, Hebrews says it's impossible to please God without faith. And if we have faith and we pray, we need to have faith to believe that God has heard and God is answering, but now God is going to do it in His will his way and in His timing. Now I believe that. Pray. Believe. I say it like this. This is my saying. Pray. Get out the way. And let God have His way. Amen. Because when we get out the way. We give God a chance to work. A chance. To operate. The way He knows. He needs to operate. Either in our lives or our friends' lives, or those we're praying for a lot. God knows. Remember Daniel prayed. And his prayer was held up 21 days. God heard it. God answered it, but his prayer was held up by Satan. The one we're talking about now. Or what a Satan, Satan, whatever. Higher ups. But God hears your prayer. Don't get excited about it. Say, okay, God, I'm turning it over to you. I'm not going to do it my way. I'm going to do it your way. Amen. Because your way is going to produce results. Amen. My way is only going to cause trouble and hardships. 
Sometimes we think we know what to do. But sometimes what we think we need to do or know what to do is not what God wants to do. Sometimes God does things that surpasses all understanding. And I'm so thankful He does. I'm so thankful that He did it with a, a girl by the name of Mary. When it was time for Jesus to be born, the fulfillment of that time, Mary says to the angel, I know not a man. And the angel responded, For with God, and I'm paraphrasing, for, well, I think I am anyway, for with God all things are possible. Amen. Now I believe that. I don't believe it's some illustration. I believe it's facts. I believe it was a real Jesus who died on the cross of Calvary. I believe it was real blood that Jesus shed for you and I. Amen. I believe it was real blood that will cleanse us when we come to Him and allow Him to wash us clean. I believe that. Lord. I believe it was real. I believe it was true. I believe it took place. And I believe I need the same faith that that little girl had. She was young. I believe we need the same faith that this young girl had. And I believe we need the same faith that when Jesus said it was finished, it was finished. And I believe we need to believe that with God all things are possible. Amen. Amen. Sandy's got a beautiful testimony about her mama she shared Wednesday night. And, and we're going to, you know, we need next week, we need to get you up here and share it. But it's a beautiful testimony. When God, when God is working things out in our lives. Many times, things might happen to us. But when we let God have it, we might become a great testimony for somebody else. We don't want to do it like Lucifer. We want to do it like born-again believers. We want to do it the way God wants to do it. Want us to do it. Everything again, everything we do should and must be done God's way and in God's timing. Everything we do, with everything we're going to do, I believe must be done in faith. Must be done in faith. Have y'all ever wondered about a vehicle? Man, I have got a little bitty car about like this. And most of y'all do too. You got four tires in that thing. Some might have one. We got four. Can't afford more four. But you get in that thing and you start that thing up and you're going somewhere. Let's say you're going to Monroe. No, let's say Shreveport. You get on I-20, the speed limit, speed limit says 60, you can try it at 70. And you're going down the interstate and a little bitty thing like that with four tires going 60 or 70 miles an hour. Now you, you trust that car to hold up, right? I do. That takes a lot of faith. That takes a whole lot of faith. But I believe that when I pray that Jesus hears and He answers. And I'm <coughs> well, Let me ask you this. Let's get back to the car on the interstate. While you're going down the interstate, you know what that is? That's a flat top. You still have faith in that car, right? You just know you got a flat tire. And you know you got to do something about that flat tire. So you get out, you call road service, or you get out and try to jack it up. Y'all ever try to change the tire on a little video car like that? Amen? Then you put the tire back on and you got a little something they call, uh, what they call that car, tire? I call it a make believe tire. Donut. Uh, what is it? Well, anyway, it's a make-believe car. You put that little donut on that thing, and you're going like that, but you're still going to street for it. You still got faith, right? We need to have faith. We need to have faith in our walk with Jesus Christ. When things might not be going the way we think it should go. Because Jesus is going to bring us where He wants us. He's going to bring us where He wants us. It's time. It's time, and I believe this right now today, 
It's time for believers to quit looking with their physical eyes at people and finding fault with people instead of looking at people with their spiritual eyes and seeing the spirituality about those people. Amen? It's time to bury all this hatred because of this or that. It's time that we pick up the cross of Jesus Christ and we help each other on the pathway of life. It's time that we cut all this humbug out and start coming to the foot of the cross of Calvary and saying, I believe my faith is in you, Jesus Christ. Now what you want me to do for your creation? Amen. Too much hatred. We need to take that hatred and break it and say, Satan, take your hatred and get out of here and go into the dry places in the name of Jesus Christ because all I want is love in my heart and all I want is the best for everybody that God has touched. Amen. Amen. I don't care who you are. I want you to be blessed beyond measure. Amen. But let's quit looking with our physical eyes and start looking with our spiritual eyes. Satan wanted so much. And what Satan is going to get in the end is the pit of hell reserved for him and his fallen angels. Jesus Christ has got a place reserved and prepared for each one of us in his glory. Amen. We see here as we close. Iniquity was found in Lucifer, and these five eyes was his downfall. And I say this, let's say we didn't do it our way, but rather we did it in God's way. God bless y'all. Amen.